Hi, I'm Marcy Grabowski with the Hawaii Ocean Observing System, an organization which provides information about Hawaii's coastal and open ocean. We're here today at the Kulio'o Stream Mouth to see just what you would find in stream water entering the ocean. To help us is Alyssa Miller with Malama Mauna Lua. That's an organization that uses science to help navigate change in our community. Let's see what Alyssa's up to. Hey Alyssa, how's it going? Hi Marcy, it's good to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah. So I'm sure people are wondering what kinds of things we'd find in the stream here. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That's a good question. If you look here at Coolio O Stream, you'll notice right away that it's lined with concrete. The reason it was lined with concrete is to protect the, the houses that were built in the valley from flooding. So essentially you're getting water off the land more quickly so it doesn't have time to build up and it kind of acts like a water slide. Exactly. But that fast-moving water can cause quite a few problems. Like what? Well, for one thing, sediment from the mountain is no longer caught or filtered as it comes down. So it tends to just race down the mountain and straight out into the reef. And that sediment um, ultimately will attract algae um, and toxicants. And once that layer of algae and toxicants gets built up, it can smother and even kill coral reefs. Um, and new coral just won't grow on it either. So I'm assuming that once the coral's gone, then the organisms that live there also are gone. You end up in a place with the ocean with much less diversity. Uh, the fish and the animals that live in the coral reef and the seagrass beds just can't survive in that muck out there. Well, today we're going to look at some water quality um, parameters today with this very simple water quality monitoring kit that you can easily order online. We're going to look for two nutrients in the water, um, nitrogen and phosphorus, and they are two commonly occurring nutrients in urban runoff. Okay. Where do nitrogen and phosphorus come from? How do they even get in the water? They come from a variety of sources, but the most common ones would be your lawn fertilizers uh, or other types of fertilizers. Also soaps and detergents, say if you're washing your car, animal wastes, um, cleaners, things like that. Okay. So how does this nutrient testing kit work? Well, let me show you. Let's do a test for nitrates and phosphates. So what we'll do today are simple colorimetric tests for both um, nitrate and phosphate. Colorimetric means there's just a color change involved. And uh, the darker the color change that you get, the higher the concentration of the nutrient in the water. Okay. okay. So the first thing that we'll look at is the nitrate level. So what we'll do is we'll take one of these test tubes and we'll fill it to the five milliliter line with our water sample that we've already collected out of the stream mouth. Okay. So if you could do that. Sure. Okay, I think that's it. Great. The next thing that we'll do is we'll take one of these nitrate reag reagent tablets and we'll put it inside the test tube. Okay. Just drop it in. That's right. Okay. Simple, yeah? Yeah. And go ahead and cap it. And then what you'll want to do is to just slowly continue to invert the tube. It helps if you put a finger on each end. There you go. Okay. And just keep inverting it. Um, the idea being not to shake it, but to slowly invert it until the tablet dissolves. Okay. And this can take just a couple minutes. So while we're waiting for that test uh, reaction to occur, we'll go ahead and uh, run our phosphate test. Okay. okay. So the next thing we'll do is use another test tube of the same type okay. and we'll fill it to the 10 milliliter line with our water sample. Great. And then we'll add one of these tablets, which is a phosphate reagent tablet. All right. Oops. All right. And it's the same procedure. Cap the sample, invert it until the tablet dissolves or nearly dissolves. If sometimes they won't completely dissolve. And is this one, do you have to wait five minutes for exactly. this one too? Exactly, we'll wait another okay. five or so minutes for that one as well. All right, great job. So it seems like this is a really easy test that you could do in your own community. Absolutely. These are simple, inexpensive, easy to use tests that anyone can use. Um, they're very simple for school groups, for community members. You could come out and monitor your own stream. All right, Alyssa, I think it's been about five minutes. Our test should be done, right? Yeah, let's see what we have here. Okay. Do you want to start with the nitrate? Yes. Uh, the procedure for determining the level of nitrate that you find in the water is to lay this test tube on the white strip adjacent to the indicator levels on this 
on the table. Okay. So what we see here is a white card with red dots and we match the color of the sample to, to the closest red dot color on the card. So this does look pretty high for the colors that are on there. Yeah, it's about a medium range here and this gives us a kind of a range of, of the level. It doesn't give us a precise level, but it gives us a good idea of how much is there. Okay. The same, we'll do the same thing with the phosphate test. Okay. We'll take the test tube and we'll lay it on the white space next to the phosphate indicator colors and we'll try to match the color of the test tube with the closest color dot on the card. Okay. And again, it looks like we have kind of a mid-range going on here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So 100 years ago, before there was this channelized stream with all the concrete and all this development, what kind of nutrient levels would we see? Well, we definitely would have seen a better balance of nutrients between the land and the ocean. Uh, we also would have seen uh, a lot more diversity in habitats in the bay, uh, a lot less of this, you know, associated algae growth and so forth. There still would have been some algae and some sediment out there, but nothing like the muck that we see here. The coral reefs would have been in better shape um, and the seagrass beds would have been in, in better condition. Thanks so much for your time today, Alyssa. This has been really educational. Yeah, it's great to learn more about the nutrients and other things that are in our streams. And, you know, remember this is a simple test. Anybody can come out and do it and um, we hope more people will come out and, and take care of their streams. If you'd like to learn more about ocean awareness, Search the internet for Malama Mauna Lua, Navigating Change, and the Hawaii Ocean Observing System. Take what we've learned today and navigate change in your own backyard.